We open the show tonight in front of Mike Sillinger's locker. It's a milestone night. He's going to be playing in his 1,000th game. The achievement will be recognized in a pregame ceremony at Center Ice with his wife and three kids who are a big part of his 1,000 games, having moved all over North America really just to keep up with them. Mike skated his first shift for the Detroit Red Wings in 1990, and 1,000 games later, he's still never taken one off. Enjoy him tonight. It's the Islanders and the Lightning straight ahead on FSN. It's a special night for one New York Islander, and the Loudville lineup makes their way into the building for Mike Sillinger's 1,000th National Hockey League game as the Islanders face the Tampa Bay Lightning. Hi again, everyone. I'm Howie Rose, along with Billy Jaffe. The Islanders haven't played a whole lot of hockey lately. The Tampa Bay Lightning have not won a game on the road. They are 0-5, and yet Mike Sillinger is really center stage tonight playing game number 1,000. Uh, deservedly so. Uh, this is a former first-round pick, folks, of the Detroit Red Wings. 11th overall back in 1989. Came in with high expectations. However, he's had to play for a lot of teams to get to these 1,000 games. We're going to take a look at a highlight from each one. You, you, you see right there Vancouver, earlier Anaheim. How about Philadelphia, Florida? How, the thing here, Howie, is that he's been traded so many times, but it's the teams at perfect times, meaning for the playoffs. They want him for what he does best. Take face off, help kill penalties, and score some timely goals. That's nice to be wanted. I mean, he's played on average less than 100 games with every one of those teams. Now, Columbus, whom you just saw him scoring for, is the team he's played the most for, and he'll have an opportunity to surpass those numbers with the Islanders. They are briefly a St. Louis Blue and then a Nashville Predator. And, and he loves being here on the island as we get his last look at the team right there. He has done great things for the Islanders so far. And Sillinger is particularly proud to hit the milestone of 1,000 games. It's obviously uh, quite an accomplishment. You know, I think uh, you know, I've had all week to reflect on it and um, have, have had all week to enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I'm just kind of can't wait for the game to be played now. So uh, I guess to be put in that category of a select few, it's, it's quite an honor. And, um, you know, again, it's, uh, it's quite an accomplishment. Well, Ruslan Fedotenko is a big part of the Tampa Bay Lightning Stanley Cup team in 2004. He faces his former organization tonight. He's played awfully well for the Islanders. It's the Islanders and the Lightning on the island coming right up. Think about it. I mean, that's that's a lot of games, and uh, and and to last in, in this game that long, um, you have to give credit to, to the individual and, and Mike Sillinger himself, and how he uh, kept his body in, in shape, and how he how he works in the off season, how he prepares himself. And there's only a, a a few hundred guys that have done it in the you know in the entire league, so it's uh, you know it's a quite an honor and achievement, and you know it's uh, Mike Sillinger, a great professional, a great teammate. I know uh, you know his family and and his teammates, and you know. We're all proud of uh, of this accomplishment. We're just joking how many people he's going to end up having out here. It's going to be the Mike Cylinder show, and you know, give him a hard time. And you know, we're all happy for him. You know, it's a big big night for him. It only comes once, and uh, you need to celebrate it. And celebrate they will as the entire team joins number 18 on the ice for a special presentation, commemorating the fact that not only is he playing in his 1,000th game, he'll only be the sixth Islander to play number 1,000 as a member of the New York Islanders. And right now, let's join the public address as we pick up the ceremonies on the ice. For 17 years, Mike Sillinger has been one of the most respected leaders, teammates, and two-way centers in the National Hockey League. And tonight, Mike is playing in his 1,000th NHL regular season game. Mike Sillinger also becomes just the sixth member of the New York Auditors to play his 1,000th NHL game wearing the orange and blue jersey. Please direct your attention to the video board to take a look back at Mike Sillinger's finest moment as an Islander. Still loose. 
Cruz. He Pietro without a stick. All of that because of Crosby. But back come the Islanders. Hilbert now. For Selinger, he shoots. He scores! Joining Mike on the ice tonight is his wife Carla and sons Owen, Lucas, and Cole. Here tonight, on behalf of the NHL, is Senior Vice President of Hockey Operations for the NHL, Jim Gregory. Jim is here to present Mike with an engraved Tiffany Crystal Trophy, acknowledging his 1,000th game milestone. Here, representing the Islanders organization, our general manager, Garth Snow, and Islanders owner, Charles Wong. They're presenting Mike with a framed Sillinger 1000 jersey and a silver hockey stick commemorating his 1,000 games in the league and especially his time with the New York Islanders. And now, to congratulate Mike on his 1,000th game, is the entire New York Islanders team. <laughs> Presenting a gift from the team is Islanders captain Bill Guerin. He will present Mike and Carla with matching Rolex Yachtmaster watches. And now, fans, how about a big round of applause for your assistant captain and newest member of the 1000 NHL Game Club, number 18, Mike Sillinger. The sixth Islander in franchise history to play in his 1,000th game fans, as an Islander. Stand. Two former Islanders the played their first 1,000 games as an Islander, and only twice in the last five times that this has happened have the Islanders won, including 11-3 when Butch Goring played in his 1,000th game as an Islander. But really, the consummate professional won't, won't go down in NHL history as a superstar, but to play for 12 teams and 21 head coaches, you're doing something right. Well, you're surviving in the league, and the one thing Mike told me, we, uh, asked him about his thousand game, how important this to him. He said, "Well, you know what? When I think back when I was in the minors playing at Glens Falls, playing with the Detroit Red Wings, he said, I wasn't sure that's really where I wanted to go. He said, but I learned to mature, I learned to develop my game, and it's probably one of the reasons why I was able to last a thousand games in the National Hockey League. And actually, he's going to play for 22 head coaches when he plays for Al Arbor." for three periods on Saturday night. So he started as a Detroit Red Wing. The first shift he ever took 
with Steve Eiserman and Islanders assistant coach Gerard Gallant. That's the first shift he ever took a thousand games ago. Now, uh, Mike Sillinger playing for his the Islanders tonight in his 1,000th game and being honored there at center ice with uh, his wife Carla and three boys. Mike Sillinger scored the last goal for the Islanders in their loss to Carolina, yeah. and they haven't played since. So they do have a game to play tonight. It's been a very difficult thing to deal with, just two games in 12 days. You know, it's hard. You, you know, you, you take some time off and you try to get your timing back. Uh, you try to be mentally prepared. But, um, you know, in all honesty, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to, uh, you know, when you're not playing as many games as you'd like to, to stay as sharp as you want. After the loss, like in the last game, I think we, we are anxious to to have another chance and, and to, to get a win. And hopefully we can learn from the layoff we had uh, before other game and, and you know, not to make same, same mistakes and have a better start in this game. It's a lot different from last time to, to this time. We only had uh, four days this time. Last time it was a whole week. So uh, the guys are eager to play. And uh, we had a good pregame skate here today. So they, they look like they're ready. So not as difficult as seven days off, but Tampa has played now twice in the metropolitan area. Two losses. They've been outscored 9-2 to two in those two games, so they are hungry as well, Howie. All right, Deb, thank you. And Mike Sillinger now joins a list that started with Ed Westfall and then the Butch Goring, Dennis Potvin, Brian Trottier, Keith Acton, and now Sillinger, who takes the opening draw against Chris Gratton. Plays number 1,000. As a New York Islander, and off the opening faceoff, Chris Gratton, number 77, throws it back in his own zone to Paul Ranger. He and Dan Boyle, number 22, the defense pair as Boyle lugs it in, but they go offside. And the statement being made by John Tortorella, the head coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning, with Andre Waugh and Nick Tarnaski and Chris Gratton on the ice is get something going early, boys. As Deb Coffin just mentioned, they've been outscored 9 to 2 on their stay in the New York area. And this team is 0 and 5 on the road this season. 5 0 and 1 at home, 0 and 5 on the road. They can't get it going. And this Tampa Bay team ought to be pretty snarly off of the way they played most of their last two games. John Tortorella said that the coaching staff felt there were only about six or seven legitimate scoring chances in their loss to the Rangers two games ago. And although they had a better finish to the second period last night, they weren't a whole lot better. So Marty St. Louis, number 26, shoved by Brendan Witt. Witt and Martinic, the Islander defense pair. Back to the line. Boyle, a drive. Stick save through traffic by Di Pietro. A good one. And then it's chipped away by Guerin, but the Lightning recover. Richards wheels it back in. Good move, St. Louis, on Witt, who then shoved him. And Martinic follows up by whipping it around the boards. Janalovic, number 17, failed to reach it for the Lightning. He is back in the National Hockey League after having played since the lockout in Europe. And this is first year back with the Tampa Bay Lightning. New York Islanders head coach Ted Nolan said that this week they did something different with the few days off. They did more competitive one-on-one, -on -one, three on three, four on four type battles, game situations. A little more teaching last week. He says, you know what? Maybe we weren't ready for the game against Carolina as much as we needed to be. We thought we were, but this week he made sure to have that competitive spirit fired up in practice every time. It's mind-boggling, isn't it, that the Islanders have played just two games in the last 12 days. It's really impossible to understand. It's certainly a quirk in the schedule, and it doesn't do the Islanders any favors when you consider the games they're going to have to play between now and the end of the season. Their schedule thus becomes more compressed than any other teams in the league. You're being kind. It's brutal. There's going to be some brutal times out there for the Islanders. That's why right now with these games when they're rested, they've got to make sure to bank the points. Comrie, Fedotenko, and Hunter, the Islander forwards here with Campoli and Gervais back. Jason Ward to LeCavalier. He missed it. Vinny Prospel, number 20, the third forward on that line for the Lightning. And Philip Kuba, number 71, throws it into the Islanders' zone. We're a minute and 40 seconds in. Fedotenko fires one around the boards. Hunter chases the carom. He's squeezed to the boards by Ranger. Ward digs forward as well. Comrie for the Islanders gets it loose. Tried to slip it in front. Couldn't do it because Kuba had him nicely covered. And then he reverses the puck to Ranger. Comrie and then Hunter angling on the forecheck, but strong work by Ranger to muscle it ahead. In comes Prospel. They stay on side. Ward snaps one into the catching glove of Di Pietro. A team like the Tampa Bay Lightning that is filled, of, filled with very offensive-minded players. What, what happens is when you don't score a lot of goals like Tampa has lately, as you get a look at the ward shot on Di Pietro, is that you start pressing. But when you got guys that lead by offensive example, 
they start pressing too much and they start cheating on the wrong side of the puck. And that's what it, therefore opens up their defensive game. And that's why they've had so many blunders the last few games is that they haven't had a lot of team good, good team defense. Now it's Ranger back in center, slipping it back to Andreas Carlson, number 24, who's playing his first game this year for the Lightning. He had spent four years out of the NHL before returning to the Lightning last year. Actually, joining the Lightning would be a better way to put it since he played with Atlanta before taking four years, most of which were played overseas. And this is Boyle, who suffered a freaky injury to his wrist. And the Lightning locker room. And the drive by Wellette. Knocked aside by Di Pietro for Boyle. This is only his third game. Centering feed. And a shot by Carlson. Stopped by Di Pietro. Ranger flings it at the net. And that goes wide. And Ricky's been tested a couple of times early. And has looked sharp. Razacek dumps it in. And this big game for Rick, too. Just for his own mindset. Given the fact that he went to the bench after giving up six against Carolina on Saturday. And now he risks one out of the zone. Fumbled by Lukowicz, the former Islander. So here's Garrett shooting, and he went wide. Hilbert catches the carom. Hooks up with Garrett. Looks for help in front. Got it to the feet of the goaltender, Denny. You got a stick on it. But the Islanders keep it moving. Hilbert cycles for Sillinger. Out to Martinez. Quick shot. He was looking for Garrett's stick, really. And Lukowicz slapped it away. Garrett gets it back. Whip trying to sneak in from the point. A pull down of Hilburn results in a lightning penalty and an Islander power play. You mentioned a big comeback game for Rick DiPietro. Well, the move by Carlson just to pull up and pass over to the right side to Ouellette turns out in a huge pad save by DiPietro. And I like his placement of the puck. Even though the lightning get it back, eventually he's ready for that rebound opportunity and he makes an easy save on Carlson. Penalty called on Jan Halavich as he takes down Andy Hilbert, but Di Pietro extremely focused all week, ready to make a statement in tonight's game. He was not happy. Highlanders power play ranked second in the NHL as Garen Sizzler is stopped. Halavich in for slashing at 340. Highlanders are 12 for 42 with a man advantage, and the Lightning's penalty killers are tied for 17th best. Well, that last three games, the Islanders' power play a whopping 7 for 16. That, that has not been the issue early on for the New York Islanders. Even strength in particular, 5 on 5 has been the Achilles heel for the Islanders, a minus 10 on the 5-on-5 five five tracker right now. And the Lightning, with all their speed and creativity, they're 5 under on 5-on-5 uh, five five situations. And that's also strange. But here's Campoli setting up at the line. He and Bergeron play the points. Campoli down the boards for Comrie. He's joined up front by Garin and Fedotenko. Richards killing it with Ward up front. O'Brien and Kuba on defense. And Campoli in deep. Cues it to Garin. He's being chased aggressively by O'Brien. But it's Comrie to Bergeron with that big shot. Comrie for Bergeron, one-timer block. That was blocked by the stick of Ward. In fact, it broke his stick. So Ward a forward playing without a stick here. And O'Brien goes to the backhand to clear, and that'll allow the Lightning to get reset. Ward grabs a new stick and heads to the bench as Bergeron, with a minute three to the power play, starts the rush. Marc-Andre Bergeron dumps it in, but Denis grabs it, looks for an outlet, finds Lukowicz, who's met immediately by Sillinger. And now Chatan feeds it back to the blue line. Campoli to Bergeron. Campoli again. Moves straight away. Now off to Sillinger. Mike Sillinger backs up. Puts it behind the net. Hunter shoved by Lukowicz. Bergeron jumps in. Keeps it alive. 37 to the power play. Chatan to Bergeron. Let's it go. It's tipped to me. The save. And the whistle stops play. I, I love that last play by Marc-Andre Bergeron because he finds a way to get the puck through to the net. Last game, Holly, Bergeron had three shots on goal, but he had six that were blocked and two that missed the net. Here's a good punch shot by Bergeron. Gerard Gallant, I know, talked with Bergeron, wanted to make sure that, you know, don't always keep your head down and give away that you're going to have that big bomb coming. You know, keep your head up, find the seam, and get it through to the net. Remember, we talked about Brian Berard doing that so well earlier this year. All right, now, Bergeron back on the bench. Sutton and Gervais are the defense. And it's Sillinger up front with Hunter and Chatan, but Chris McDonald fires one to center that hit the skate of his own man, Grant. 
and that allows the Islanders to get it back. But they're just about out of time on the power play. Seven seconds remain. And so Jan Alavic is standing in the penalty box, and here he comes. Islanders fail to connect. The floater held by Denis keeps it moving by dropping it off to Ranger. Give the Islanders two shots on that power play. Chris Simon on with Richard Park. And Miro Chatan will look to head to the bench here, presumably. But the Islanders keep the puck, and Park brings it in. Now to Chatan. He fires and went wide with it by a pretty good margin. Didn't get a whole lot on the shot. Lovic scoops it out to center. Now Miro will head to the bench, replaced by Aaron Johnson, who is the third forward on this fourth line with Simon and Park. As to the back of Simon's skate, Witt follows up by dumping in. Brad Lukowicz back with a lightning. From whence he came when he became a New York Islander. And that one lockered away by Di Pietro. Lukowicz was a member of the Stanley Cup team in 2003-2004. The Islanders lost the first round of the playoffs to that Tampa team in five games. Johnson tries to get it to the net. It went off Lukowicz. Then he recovers and throws it at Denny. 13 9 to go here in the opening period. Islanders now about shot the lightning 6-5 very early on. Mike Comrie smacks it in behind the net. Under a wraparound attempt. But Atenko gets it again. Nice feed. Comrie lines it up, but it's deflected by, I believe, the skate of Richards and out of play. 12.47 to go. First period on the island. Uh, hey. Wow, look at that, hey. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Thanks, boys. Well, Mike Sillinger will be heard throughout the night in intervals, of course, as he is wearing a mic for us. And if you just joined us and wonder what all the hubbub is, he's playing in his 1,000th NHL game tonight. And in honor of that, Mike taped up about a dozen sticks today so he can use different ones at different times. He's going to give them to special people that are here. He has about 20 members of his family, including his father, Bob, who came in from Regina, Saskatchewan, and other relatives as well. And, and uh, you know, he also has a few different jerseys. I know that the equipment staff, uh, Scott Boggs and Shaky Krause, took care of getting ready for him. And he's not going to wear that one with 1,000 on it. Not yet, anyway. He may wear it around the house <laughs> the during the summer. The kids are looking at it. They're looking at it. They're going to try and take it out of that out of that frame. Here's Dan Boyle, number 22 for the Lightning, feeding it on left wing for a Carlson dump in. He and Bent was squeezed to the boards by Martinic just as he dumped the puck in. Good shift early on by Carlson. Gets him a promotion with LeCavalier right now. Fedotenko started to chug right down the middle, was forced to the boards. Carlson got back and feeds Boyle, and here come the Lightning with 12.21 to go in the opening period. Mila Cavalier pokes it in. Cavalier, St. Louis, and Carlson out there right now, and it is not at all a coincidence that Witt and Martinic are the defense pair out against him. Now a dump in by Hunter. Denis. Leaves it for his defense. Kuba failed to clear. Bergenheim let it go, but well wide. And now Andre Wah moves up the left wing. Campoli back in position. Took it away neatly from Grat. Nice play, Campoli. Long fling for Bergenheim. Kuba gets there with him. They bump, but they call the icing, ruling that Kuba touched it first. Here are the sticks that we were just talking about that Mike Sillinger got all set this morning. I said, Mike, you're going to be pretty strong after doing all this cutting today. Hey, the middle one back again. There's glue in that. That one back? There's glue in that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Good job. Uh, he, you know, he's, he's changing his sticks right there. I don't know if that was for uh, more than anything, except one of them might be bad. He said there's a too much glue in that one right there, but he's specific. He was happy. He was, you know, he's such a good guy, deserving of, of this honor and this accolades being given to him today. Couldn't have been happier this morning. Just talking to everybody. Anybody you wanted to talk to, he's happy. St. Louis got a quick shot off. Now, explain the bit about the glue. Is that just because he's using a composite? He's got to tuck the blade in with some glue? Well, yeah. I, well, where he was pointing, it was almost like in the shaft that like he was shaking, it looked like, with Scott Boggs. So there might be something in the shaft there. Uh, he said there was some glue in here. 
It'll be interesting to ask him where exactly that was, though. Could, you know, sometimes guys put extra glue, sometimes glue gets loose that have been put on from the factory. I'm forever amazed at how the sticks are not made to exact specifications. The guys always well, they saw are. them. And, well, but, I mean, are you talking they about so much work with it? Well, because guys like cutting them to certain lengths at certain times. In front, all alone at Highway Robbery by D. Pietro on a disbelieving Jan Halovic. Nicky Sharp in the early going tonight. Halovic with a quick shot after Richards get the attention of both Islander defensemen opening up the low seam pass to Halovic. Di Pietro gets it though at the glove easily. But both D's see on the right side there. Sutton's over there as well. He's the left side defenseman. Both him and Bergeron committed to Richards. One of them's got to stay with the winger Halovic cutting down low. So the best scoring chance for either team and that's as good a save as you can expect to see from a goaltender in the course of a game. Pretty good goal score. I mean that's been Jan Halavich's ticket to the NHL throughout the years that he's been up here. The fact that he's an offensively skilled player but Di Pietro just stoned him. And, and you notice how little movement there was. He made it look easy. Now Garen across to Helbert. He shoots and it deflects off the stick of Ranger and out of play. And, and, that's a few, few blocks by the Lightning defense already. They've been very good. They've been very active with blocking shots. The Islanders with six shots on goal. Five have missed the net and six already in this period have been blocked by the bodies or sticks of the Tampa Bay Lightning and deflected out of play. Just to finish up the thought on the hockey sticks, guys, you know, for the most part, you have the same height. For the most part. Once in a while, you'll tweak that. But the reason that they don't come with all the exact stuff is that guys, they like playing around with it. It's just a piece of equipment. It's like golfers with golf clubs. They like tweaking it to get the best feel possible. You wouldn't believe some of the work that guys do before games on their sticks and how long it can take, but to them, it's routine. They do it before every game. And it's relaxing for a lot of them, too. It really is. 10 16 to go here in the opening period. Icing called against the Lightning. We'll bring the face off back into the Tampa Bay zone. Quit seeing plenty of Vinny LeCavalier tonight. Uh, you expect that. Now, now John Tortorella, the head coach of the Lightning, though, is, is mixing things up so much and maybe getting LeCavalier away from Brendan Wood as much as he can. But he's right now, Tortorella is just putting out any matchup or any line that he feels is matching well right now. He just wants to get something going here on the road. Well, the icing, of course, he could not change there. And the Islanders control the draw. Hunter working along the boards where he's checked by Boyle. Boyle played more last night than he did in his first game. And... Uh, We'll see plenty of time tonight again. John Tortorella said to us this morning, he said, I don't care how many mistakes Dan Boyle makes. He's going to play 30 minutes tonight if he has to, and he's going to get right back out there if he makes a mistake. We need him in game shape. And here comes St. Louis. Already St. Louis across to La Cavalier. Flubs a pass that was intended for O'Brien, and then Hunter inadvertently poked it into his own bench with 9.36 remaining. First period on the island. 48 years ago today when Howard Rose was just five years old and Jacques oh, Plant put on the goalie mask for the first time. What great footage after suffering a severe laceration in his face area. We've got a great feature on this coming up at intermission. Make sure to watch it and look at where the mask has come to right now. Have you ever put on a goalie mask? Seriously, have you ever put on one of these new age goalie masks? Not in 20 or 25 years. Oh no, that's old age. I'm talking <laughs> now. I'm talking new age right now. You can get absolutely thumped in the face. I've had it done a few times and it's amazing. It just deflects right off there. You have that done every morning. Skate guys come over and just <laughs> thump you on the face to get you game ready. Uh, that was a game changing moment 48 years ago. Andy Bathgate of the Rangers lifted a backhander that caught Jacques Plant in the face. In fact, Stan Fischler, our buddy, covered that game for the old New York Journal American. Why does that not surprise me? Ruslan <laughs> Fedotenko sends it up ahead. He so did every game. <laughs> well, you know what? So did the legendary, the equally legendary Red yeah. Fisher for the Montreal Gazette. And, um, you know, I mean, we've talked about Red from time to time. He has such a great deadpan. Jacques Vaughn said to him after the game, he said, look pretty ugly, huh? And Fisher said, oh, yeah, had a good start. <laughs> 840 to go here in the opening period. Jacques Vaughn won six Stanley Cups during his days. This is Mike Sundin, number 39, uh, Lundin, pardon me, out of the University of Maine. Matt Sundin, nowhere to be found tonight. At least not in this building. 
Out in front, Le Cavalier denied by Di Pietro. And then Rick keeps the glove on him with Le Cavalier down right in the goal mount. Too much room in front, though. Islanders standing around looking at star players. Good play by Boyle there. Then he took a hit from Johnson. They move it quickly. Le Cavalier overskated. Simon's feed for Garen. Recovered off the feet by Garen. Ranger slows him and ultimately takes him down. And Le Cavalier fires it rink wide, and Prospel just slams it off the boards to get it out of the lightning zone. Now, Poli for Gervais. 7.42 to go in the period. Pass missed by Hilbert. Maybe an icing. Boyle with half a step. Gets there first, even though he's hit by Hilbert as the icing is called. Di Pietro been the best player in this period for the Islanders. But the Lightning play very aggressive. But right now, I just want you to watch how the Islanders are just backing off. And all of a sudden, again, in between Bergeron and Sutton comes Le Cavalier. When he's on the ice, folks, you have to have that man-on-man -man with him down low. He is pound for bound, the top three power forward in the National Hockey League right now. Now, along with, along with Jerome McGinley, I think Vinny LeCavalier are the top two power forwards right now in the game. Ovechkin, number three. And, you know, Ovechkin's just learning all that. This guy can do it all, and it's not uncommon to have a guy shouting him all the time. He's that good. There are some who might say, well, what took so long, given his initial draft status as first overall? But, you know, you just tend to appreciate the very, very few who were drafted at that level and become instant superstars. Took the Cavalier a little while. In a few years, he got it. He, he, he grew into the role. He grew into Tampa Bay, understood the market down there. He's a star. Now Olavic with another chance that St. Louis tried to bat out of midair and could not. Islanders having a little trouble in their own end here. Kuba with a pinch keeps it deep. Richards took the hit but failed to center the puck. But then jumping in is Halavich again. He's been very active and on the puck in this first period is Jan Halavich. Now Richards, number 19, off to St. Louis. This line buzzing. Richards at a deep angle. Sets up Kuba. And now Kuba wrists one that's blocked away by Di Pietro. Lines up Ricky. I think hit Hilbert, yep, his own he guy. Yes, he did. He was trying to swap the puck. Garen fires. He scores! And at the very least, that'll make Hilbert feel a little bit better. Unfortunately, I think Di Pietro's going to get the assist, though, and not Hilbert. One to nothing <laughs> Islanders, but the concern, of course, is for Hilbert, and here's why. Oof. Oh, baby. Right in the face, and down goes Hilbert. He gets himself up, though, but Di Pietro swatted the puck over to Sillinger, who just kind of golfs it over to uh, Billy Guerin, leads to this great play up the zone, and then Mark Denis, a goalie who's trying to make his own mark for this Tampa team, having played in just three games this season, lets one in through the five hole. That's a tough one to give up there. A good one for the Islanders in quick transition. Well, if it makes Hilbert feel any better, he never made it to the bench, so at least he'll get a plus. <laughs> One to nothing, New York. Di Pietro in the trapezoid. You know, when you look at it for the first time, it's hard to restrain yourself. But that had to hurt. I mean, it stunned Hilbert, but it had to really hurt him, too. Now Boyle throws one that skitters right through the goal mount. You now Di Pietro was was not so much frustrated, but he was trying to help his team up, his teammates out to get it out of the way there, because that line in Tampa was all over him. Man pass stops play. 5:52 remaining as they work on Hilbert, the Islanders' lead. Captain Bill Guerin gets the Islanders out to a one nothing lead. Last year, Billy Guerin played in his 1,000th game. Officially tonight, this is 1,036 for him, and he gets an assist from Mr. 1,000 himself in tonight's matchup. Mike Sillinger, as he pushed the puck up to Bill Guerin, again, doing what a captain does best. He recognized and that, and that he needed to help get his team going, and that's where Billy Guerin likes shooting from. Coming down on the wing, using that right-handed shot, and he just powered it right through the legs of Mark Denis. So for Sillinger, is 299th National Hockey League assist. Uh, Guerin's fifth of the year at 1329. We should put this thousandth game in some perspective. Consider that the National Hockey League opened for business in 1917. And in all that time, Sillinger is just the 223rd player to reach a thousand games. Now, of course, earlier on, they played far fewer games and there were far fewer teams than there are now, which makes it a little more attainable today. 
Here's LeCavalier pulling up, can't get a shot off. Well, that follows, and Hunter makes it out of trouble. That's an excellent play by Trent Hunter there, Howie, because he's the weak side guy, and he sacks all the way back. Even though three other Islanders were already back there, he got to that far post area to cover any opportunity from a Tampa player. Those new skates of his. He's flying. You love those new skates, don't you? I just love the fact that you can open them up one day and play with them the next. Here's the deal. We're going to put new skates and a goalie mask on you soon. And we're going to tape. We're going to shoot that one morning skate. You don't have to do that. I'll just give you a picture from Halloween yesterday. <laughs> Call it a draw. <laughs> Lukowicz fires, and that hits Campoli. Lands on the stick of Richards. Olavich to St. Louis. Richards to St. Louis. And that's blocked away. Now Shatan pushes it ahead. He's got a step on Lukowicz. In on goal. Miro denied. Lukowicz tried to do what he could, but Shatan had a step. Now Denis save. And St. Louis sweeps it out of the zone. Gervais back to get it. Brad Lukowicz has not had a great start, and that's putting it mildly. He is a minus 10 for Tampa Bay this year. Minus six in his last three alone. And there's going to be a penalty here. Whoa, whoa. And more. And Lukowicz threw down off the third turnbuckle. He did a, he did a, if he gets called in the penalty there, which he should, he did a stupid thing. Because the official already had his arm up. Penalty against Sean Bergenheim. How Lukowicz can't, can't look, I can't imagine Lukowicz gets away with this. No, he's not. He's being escorted over to the box as well. He evened it up. Trying to do something after getting beat on the one-on-one -on -one with Miro Chatan. Lukowicz comes in after the penalty has already been called against Bergenheim. Lukowicz gets called for a rough. They're standing up for your team, Howie, and then there's also doing the wrong thing. And you're, you're talking right there. That's four seconds later. The, the referee's arm had already been up for three or four seconds. Then Lukowicz comes in there and does it. And for a team that is struggling so much, to get a win, get a goal, let alone a win, on the road, that's not a good play. Earlier, Miro Shatan turns him. Lukowicz, used to playing the right side, this, this season playing the left side, gets beat by Miro Shatan, and Shatan almost has the goal. It's not for the left skate of Denis. So rather than attempt a Tampa power play, it's simply four on four. Bergenheim for boarding. Lukowicz for roughing at 16 minutes. Sillinger fire save, Denis! So uh, Sillinger with a great chance in his milestone game. He's already had an assist. He's playing with Garen up front, with Martinez back. Boyle and Ranger the defense. A Cavalier and Crespel for Tampa Bay. Boyle working on those 30 minutes John Tortorella promised him. Look, Cavalier! And that one denied by Di Pietro. And now Sillinger up ahead. Garen couldn't hold it. 317 remain in the period. Possible on side with Le Cavalier. Bergeron turns away from Vinny. Neat little play by Mark Andre Bergeron. And Comrie turns up ice. Get over the Tampa Bay line. Comrie flings one at Vinny, and he'll hold on, forcing a face off in the Lightning zone. Now, if anything, John Tortorella is going to be happy with the team, the opportunities that his team has generated here in the first period. They just haven't been able to get one past Rick DiPietro as Mike Comrie and the rest of the Islanders have been good, pretty good in front of them as well. This Tampa team is, they're looking for a road identity. They feel like they have one at home where they just control the puck and they play that ultra-aggressive style that they've been doing for under the Tortorella era, but on the road, it's a completely different team. Now Bergeron into the lightning zone. And Denis with a stick save. 39 to the four on four. Trouble for O'Brien, so he hears rather hard from Fedotenko, but St. Louis gets it back. One Islander back. It's Sutton. Pass was too far for Cuba. Richards takes it. Sends it back to the line to O'Brien. Now for Cuba. Philippe Cuba to O'Brien. He steps up. The shot blocked by the stick of Fedotenko. O'Brien gets it again. 13 to the four on four. This is St. Louis forced aggressively by Fedotenko. Richards gets it back. Now St. Louis for Cuba. He throws it across. That's deflected. And here comes Comrie with Fedotenko. The four-on-four four is over. Bergenheim and Lukowicz out of the box. Did it surprise you? But why would St. Louis give up that shot from about 14 feet just to the right of Rick DiPietro there? He looked to go down low with it. He's got to shoot that. 
Now Prospel with a hard feed beyond the reach of Le Cavalier who goes after it with Bergeron. Le Cavalier just gave Bergeron the stick behind the play. It remains in the Islanders zone. Ranger to Boyle. Wrist shot floats through block Le Cavalier throws it to the net camp Poli calmly blocked it and kept it in front of him. Le Cavalier right back in for Prospel. Across the line to Le Cavalier in front, pushed over the net by Ward. Di Pietro still down, tries to gather the puck in and succeeds with Crossbow down in the goal mouth. Tampa making very good decisions and good puck movement with, at the offensive blue line so far in, in, in this game, in this first period. They've been able to go east-west an awful lot and using their speed, they're creating chances. Here's another good example. Pull up move over to the Cavalier and everybody's looking at him. Nobody's got big Ward, Jason Ward in the side of the net there. If he was able to open the stick up and ramp it a little bit more, it could have gone into the net. Earlier, it's Le Cavalier who's gonna get it back. That's the play I was talking about where Martin St. Louis gave up that puck from that mid slot area. He's got such a great snap wrist shot. He's gotta use it from in there. Andy Hilbert back on the ice for the Islanders. He'll still steer clear of his goaltender for the time being. Ahead for Sillinger as we reach the final minute of the first period. Hilbert behind the net. Watched by Richards. Now Sillinger in some traffic. Hilbert helping. Lovich went down and St. Louis grabs the puck back. Unofficially the shots are even at 10. Pietro has been especially sharp here in the opening period. Richard squirrels it in. Pietro didn't hold it there. Olavic hooks up with St. Louis. And Richards, the third forward on the line, comes out from behind, put it in front. No one can finish. Gervais squeezes St. Louis to the boards. 19 left in the period. Gervais tries to muscle it away, does the same with St. Louis. But who's got the puck? It's Richards. Richards put it off the Pietro and Ricky finally finds it and clears it away. I think that hit Campoli first and went right back into Di Pietro. Very heads up play. And so the first period ends with the Islanders leading one to nothing. Not quite sure what to make of this period considering oh. the Islanders at times had some problems in front of their goaltender and Ricky bailed them out. Well, I was going to say, I'll tell you about, about that first period, Rick Di Pietro, the difference. Islanders had two or three decent chances, one real good one, and they ended up scoring on that when Mark Denis allowed the slap shot to get through the legs by that guy right there, Bill Guerin. Uh, otherwise, you know what, Tampa, you know, again, John Tortorell and their coaching staff, Howie, are going to be very happy. They're going to be very happy with the way that they generated offense in that period, but it was smart offense generated by solid foundation of good defense, and that's what John Tortorella was preaching this morning. Well, the Islanders will certainly take the one to nothing lead. Which they carry off ice. John Tortorella having a word with referee Greg Kimmerly as the first period comes to a close. One to nothing, New York. And Deb Kaufman is standing by with the man of the hour. Mike Sillinger probably feels like he's done a thousand of these intermission interviews with your family on the ice, all of your teammates congratulating you. What was that pregame ceremony like? That was pretty special. You know, I think uh, my boys understand uh, that their, their dad plays in the National Hockey League and it's kind of fun that they, they follow and they pay attention you know their dad's your favorite and the Islanders are their favorite so it's a uh, fun uh, you know nice that they can be a part of it and uh, you know I got a good wife you knew that the milestone was going to come in the game tonight you've had some time to reflect on your career what are some of the things that you thought about this week heading into the game oh just uh, what a great accomplishment it is you know it's a fantastic milestone and uh, you know you remember your first game and I never really thought in a million years I played a thousand games so just a great accomplishment. It's an honor to be in that 200-plus uh, group and, you know, hopefully many more. I'm sure you want the 1,000th game to be remembered as a win. How's it going so far out there? Uh, so far, not bad. You know, we had a good, for a, got a good break there, scored the first goal, and, uh, you know, got a chance up here to get our feet uh, underneath us. We had a week off, so hopefully we can uh, get everyone involved in the game here. All right, well, congratulations on 1,000. Thank you very much. Mike Sillinger in game number 1,000 gets his 299th career assist. The helper on Bill Guerin's fifth goal of the season, and the Islanders are out in front of Tampa Bay. 1-0 will continue here at the intermission from the Coliseum right after this.
We are back on Hockey Night Live. It's a Thursday night at the Coliseum, the Islanders' only game of the week. They will play, though, again on Saturday. They're leading at one to nothing on Mike Sillinger's night, playing in his 1,000th game. Mike had his first cup of coffee in the league before there was Starbucks back in 1990 when he was a Detroit Red Wing. Uh, so he was the story as they dropped the puck, and he was on the ice when they scored the goal, and Bill Guerin's the one who got it. Well, it's only fitting when it's your night. Uh... And the night's not over. It's uh, it's great that you can get a point on the first goal. And Bill Guerin is the one who said that they wanted to keep it simple. But compared to how they started against Carolina, they might have tried to do too much after a lot of practice and changing a lot of things. With a whole week off, with only four days off, they kept it simple. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, they felt that maybe they just tried to do too much, and then when they came out, they thought, well, we're going to jump all over them, try and get an early goal, and then consequently they end up making some mistakes. So tonight they wanted to be keep it simple, like you said, and and not try to do too much. Uh, but you know what? They, they did that pretty well, but defensively, boy, they were not very good in their own end. And, and I guess we're back to normal because Ricky DiPietro is a, is a star again because without him, I think the score would have been 3 or 4 1. So he makes that, makes that point blank save, uh, it, I guess, uh, nine minutes in, halfway through the period. And how about him swatting Andy Hilbert in the face, though? Have you ever gotten <laughs> swatted with a stick? Uh, well, you know, I play with Billy Smith, so you, you learn to stay away from the crease area with Billy Smith. So it, it was, uh, you know, an unfortunate action where Ricky's looking to, uh, to get rid of the puck, maybe a little bit aggressive, and, uh, and poor Andy Hilbert, uh, you know, what are you going to do? All right, so one week, two milestones. We've got Mike Sillinger's 1,000th game tonight, and Saturday it'll be Al Arbor coaching his 1,500th game. It has been 15 years since he coached behind the bench for the New York Islanders. He was at practice today. He will sign his one-day contract officially tomorrow afternoon at 1.15 as the Islanders practice again, and then he will be behind the bench on Saturday. So we're really looking forward to it. Al Arbor night, Saturday, November 3rd, and now you're looking forward to it. I'm just wondering how much they're paying him. I bet you it's a <laughs> big raise from before. <laughs> You know, honestly, if you consider the inflation of salaries in the National Hockey League, he could make almost as much in one night as he made a, in a whole year, the way uh, things are now. There, there's no doubt about that. I mean, uh, way back when, you, players didn't get a lot of money, the coaches didn't get a lot of money, so I'm sure Al needs the money, and that's why he's coming back. <laughs> I think it's interesting. Scotty Bowman even said that Al was such a big help to him because he didn't even have a staff when he coached, and so Al was almost like a player coach. That's how it started for him. Islanders up one nothing. We'll talk about Jacques Plante back in the day when we come back. Well, the Islanders with a one to nothing lead over the Tampa Bay Lightning at the end of one period here at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. And in some ways, a strange period. You know, there were stretches where the Islanders really struggled, and then there were others when well, they were able to take advantage and break through with the only goal. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what happened to Rick DiPietro, the difference in that period. Tampa created a lot of chances off good east-west plays, and, you know, they look pretty good to me, except when they get down low, you can tell they're squeezing the sticks a little bit tight. Look for them just to keep shooting even more in this second period. So the only goal delivered by the Islanders came off the sick of Bill Guerin, and that was set up by Sillinger, and in part, Rick DiPietro, who you'll see in a moment, smacks his teammate Andy Hilbert inadvertently on the play preceding the goal. There were other highlights in the first period yeah. as well. <laughs> yes, there were. There were some good saves, some great saves by Di Pietro. That might have been his best one, going the opposite direction, getting his left bat on, then the glove save on Halavid, and then down in tight, he gets the second opportunity off the stick of Lacavale into his body, and then that goes into the corner. He was excellent. Billy Garrett had three shots in that period. Miro Shatan had a breakaway as well that was thwarted. But then after he makes this save, it was all about Bill Guerin getting this one on the right side. Now watch Di Pietro, boom, right into the face of Hilbert. How he doesn't get an assist on this one, I'm not sure. I don't think it hit another Tampa player, so it really should be Di Pietro up the cylinder, and then Garen right blows it by Mark Denny. You know, to give the assist to Hilbert just as a little bonus. Islanders will take it, though, and Mike Sillinger playing his 1,000th game center of attention today. New York Islanders hockey is brought to you on FSN by the New York Long Island Honda dealers at NYLIHonda.com. And hip, hip health plan of New York. Now that's hip. And by American Capital Partners. Let's go downstairs to the bench and visit with Deb Kaufman. Ruslan Fedotenko played in his 400th game against the Islanders. Can you imagine playing in a thousand? No, I can't imagine. You know, it's a it's a great accomplishment to play in the NHL and especially play a thousand games. So I'm uh, the whole team, and I'm happy for him. 
You played four seasons with Tampa Bay. What's it like now to play against them for the first time tonight? Uh, it feels great. You know, I, I played there for a long time, and uh, but now I'm an Islander, and I'm excited to play. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, playing for the Islanders against Tampa Bay and working on 500 games, guys. Everybody's got a milestone inside, huh? Ruslan Fedotenko halfway to Sillinger. But I'll tell you what, Fedotenko has shown flashes of why he was so important to the Lightning during their Stanley Cup run. He'll that, put his head down and go right to the net. Yeah, and, and back back in 2004 season when he scored 12 goals in the Stanley Cup playoffs for him. He, he did tell me this morning, though, that you know he felt his time in Tampa after having a subpar year last year, that it was the right time for him to to move on, to get out of Tampa. Nothing against the city. Loved the place, loved the team. He said, I just didn't know if I was reaching my, my potential to where I needed to be as a player. Maybe it was time for me to get into a new environment. And he's done well so far here. And Billy, with an assist added to Rick DiPietro, as you anticipated on the Islander goal scored by Garen, that gives Rick eight National Hockey League assists. Sooner or later, you get the feeling he'll add a goal to his offensive totals. And he almost took out eight teeth. And Abby, Andy Hilbert's mouth on that one. Well, Hilbert's out there now. All is fine. He's with Sillinger and Garrett. And that's the kind of thing, especially if the Islanders go on to win this game, where you'd love to have a tape recorder just to record not only stuff that Andy says to Rick or vice versa, but that other players chime in with. Sure there's some pretty funny stuff going on down there. Martinic and St. Louis who is now joined by Richards and it's even dumped by Sillinger. So the puck comes around. Garen shoved by O'Brien. And back to the line. Kubo with a wrist shot that hits the skate of Sillinger. Gilbert now banks it off the boards. O'Brien kept it in, but Garen slapped it off of his stick and back into the Tampa zone. A little more than a minute into the second period. O'Brien up for Richards. They just stayed on side. Ward drops it to Richards, then to Prospo, back to Richards, and Di Pietro got a piece of that. Still looking though for that perfect play, that highlight film type play. Tampa, I'm telling you, John Tortorella's got to say to his guys, just shoot it from anywhere. Stop trying to get tic-tac-toe. Well, they have nothing to show yet for this three-game journey to the New York metropolitan area. And they have yet to win a game on the road this year. 0-5 away from the St. Pete Times Forum. La Cavalier in the Islanders zone. Now for Ward, back to Prospel, and he missed, but from a deep angle. Ranger to Ward. Fedotenko dumps him. La Cavalier gets it back. Ranger lets one go. Di Pietro got a piece of that with plenty of company in front. Prospel looks for a play. La Cavalier has a shot blocked by Gervais. Now the race is on. Comrie on left wing with Hunter. Looked for Hunter, but it deflected. I believe it was Ranger's stick that got it. He played that two on one very smart. It was his stick that deflected it out of the harm's way. Cavalier got knocked down. Now rejoined what was a three on two for the Lightning. Chatan gets it back, though. And now Bergeron in deep. Returns it to Miro. Comrie. Miro was set to shoot. Comrie didn't get him the puck, but it comes to Bergeron who fires, and that's blocked by a sliding Ranger. So on this shift, he's used his stick and then the rest of his body. And Ward sends LeCavalier in on side. Ward was dumped, but looked like he had the presence of mind to make sure he straddled the blue line, even though he was prone. He held that right foot, just disgraced that line. Nice feed. Shatan to Park with Vazicek. Park looks for Vazicek, and that's broken up. That time it was the stick of Lundin. And it was a good back pressure play by Andre Waugh to help out Lundin so he could close the gap on Richard Park. Andre Waugh for Gret. Veteran Chris Gret wants the number one draft pick of the Lightning. And now Vazicek puts it off of Roy, or Waugh anyway. No relation to Derek Roy. They spell their last name the same way. And the dribbler in front peeled away, but not out. Sutton couldn't clear. Lundin kept it in. And Bergeron. Headmans. And Vazicek feeds the right wing. Slow to develop, but they stay on side. But then Shatan gives it up. And Lukowicz misses Gratton with a pass. 348 gone in the second period. Icing possible here. However, Shatan neutralizes that. That's the second time that Shatan in this game has beat Lukowicz to the point. Once that breakaway and that play right there. Martinez shoved by St. Louis. 
Good strong play there by Martinez. And up comes Garen working on O'Brien. The drop to Sillinger and a stick save by Denny who deadened the puck. A chance for Sillinger. Nice setup from Garen. Mark Denis shovels it for Cuba. And Campoli with no one near him still has to deal with that loose stick. Comes around the net to feed Garen. Well, at number seven with Olavich. John Olavich played it off the skate of Campoli. Andreas Carlson has it back, shouldered in by Fedoteko. Well, at the former Penguin. And don't forget the Penguins will be here for a very special night on Saturday night when Al Arbor comes out of retirement. They'll do that officially tomorrow when he signs a one game contract to coach his 1500th game. Ranger shot got through and then is spotted aside. Di Pietro got all puck. And now Fedotenko looking for Comrie. Right, Comrie checked by Boyle. And it's sent all the way down. This one will be at icing as Bergeron comes back to touch up. Not a lot of chances on net early on in this period, except this was a good one by Bill Guerin as he gets it back to Mike Sillinger, shooting from almost the same spot where Guerin scored the only goal of the game from. Take a listen to the call here. Sillinger gets that puck right into his wheelhouse, gets it right on net with one of those dozen sticks that he had taped up, especially for tonight's game. Got a good shot. Up. More importantly than the, 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 the velocity of that shot, Holly, though, was the placement as they'll redo the faceoff, because when you're, you're shooting from that side there, he angled it to where there's a potential rebound. Then he kind of put it to the side, didn't put it all the way into the corner. If the third guy was able to get to it, it could have been a golden chance for the Islanders. So Denis has stopped 11 out of 12, and Di Pietro has stopped all 12. 14.31 left in the second. Bergeron's drive hit a leg. I believe one belonging to Andreas Carlson. Chatan gets it back, puts it in front. Ranger bats it away. Now Sutton fires, and that's blocked. And the yeah. Lightning have made a habit of blocking shots tonight. That one was Andy, uh, Andy Carlson right there. Yeah, painfully. Icing called, and Carlson trying to shrug it off. That smarts right now. And Andreas Carlson's married to a former Canadian Olympic fencer. I'm sure he's been stung a few times before. Blocks the second one right there. And you know what? All he's doing is doing what a centerman has to do. He has got to come back, be the third man down low. Tampa calling a timeout here, and here's the reason why. You see how Carlson is hobbling? John Tortorella, his head coach, wants to give him time, since he's a centerman, to get better. They're tired after the, running around a little bit in their own zone. And secondly, they're sore. In particular, Carlson, he doesn't want to lose the faceoff here like they just did that last play. Started with a Vazicek faceoff win. That culminated then with the block shot by Andy Carlson, the second block shot by Carlson, before they had to take the ice. And Carlson's still limping as he skates in there. First game of the season for Andy Carlson, who also owns part of a hockey equipment manufacturing company in Sweden. Well, now he's going to look to upgrade the line to find some protection for the spot where he just got nailed. <laughs> yes, he will. It's all in research and development. Uh, Carlson will stay on. He has to because of the icing, which is why Tortorella took the timeout, which is an interesting call. Bergeron shoots it wide. He's down a goal in this game with more than half a hockey game to go, and he's already burned his only timeout. And he felt, I guess, that he had to there. But Andreas Carlson hobbled. And still, the Lightning struggling offensively, even though they've had some chances tonight. But the Islanders with the only goal. Coming from Bill Guerin. Then Boyle up ahead. Prospel with Le Cavalier. Le Cavalier to Prospel. Centering feed. Di Pietro slid across as the third forward coming in was Ward, and there's going to be a penalty to the Islanders here. Tampa power play coming up. 6.22 gone, second period. Right, we've already got it all written out for you here on our Panasonic Digital Replay. Watch here as Dan Boyle turns up. Now you're going to see the long cross ice pass. Long breakup pass. Here comes Richard Park up. He's going to take his man all the way into the net. There's Ward going to the net. He hooks him right there. That pass from Prospel otherwise would have been in the net if it wasn't for Richard Park coming back. 
but folks also the fact that the Islanders all were on one side and Boyle could easily turn the puck up the ice is not a good thing for them. They've got to get back better. First Lightning power play. Richards misses the net. He and Boyle are the point men. The Lightning have had a schizoid power play really mirroring the way the rest of their season has gone Billy because here they are still looking for their first win on the road at home their power play is the best in the league but away from home they're just two out of 20. They're not shooting enough. They, you know when they get it they're, they're holding on to it. It's, it's really a microcosm of what we've seen a lot here when they passed up some pretty good uh, shots from good areas and they're looking for that perfect play. Well they've got Richards St. Louis and Le Cavalier along with Ward and Boyle. So four forwards out there right now as Boyle lugs it deep. Left it in the corner. Sillinger pounced on it though and clear. You see no support there. It was one on one and Mike Sillinger could stay with his man and also the point was wide open. Nobody there to stop it for Tampa going all the way down. Islanders will change up now. Hilbert and Fedotenko up front. And this is Fedotenko on the back check to clear. And Richards has to go get it. Minute 12 to go on uh, the Tampa Bay power play. Islanders penalty killers rank eighth in the NHL. Their special teams have been very, very good. Fumbled by Boyle. Pressure now from Hilbert. Andy Hilbert trying to get it away from Richards. Does. Circles the net. The knee down. He looked for Fedotenko and missed him. Hilbert could have taken that all the way himself, I think. I'm not sure if Boyle's stick when he dove, if he just got a little bit of it, that it bounced past Fedotenko. There's Hilbert again shooting. A glove save by Denny. And Andy Hilbert all over the place on this penalty kill. Half minute remaining of the Tampa power play. Olavich lugs it in. Now well let to Richards up high. Cross pull down the boards. The coverage in the slot recovered by Cuba. Save Di Pietro and Rick Di Pietro has been shot. Olavich to Richards. 14 to the power play. That's blocked by Fedotenko. Olavich chipped the rebound well wide. Gospel trying to hold on. Got it to the blue line. Now Richards penalty about to end. Richards steps up shoots and that went off of Di Pietro and maybe even the goalpost. Not sure as Richards fires has it blocked by Gervais. I don't know if that even caromed him. Hit Rick in the mask or not? Because that came up high. I think it did. It, in fact, it hit him in the head and he wasn't sure. And they're going to have a penalty right now against Tampa just because of the great effort by Joseph Fosacek. But earlier, I think the bucket of Rick DiPietro got hit on that slap shot. Tortorella watching his team again. And I think a lot of this is becoming uh, 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 mental for these guys. I, almost self fulfilling. Like they can't score, they can't do it. This is at the end of the power play for Tampa. Vazacek picks it past. Right uh, past the Halovic and Halovic taking the so-called easy way out there, not using his shoulder, not using his body. He's using his stick to take down the opponent. Uh, John Tortorella, despite the fact his Lightning have played better, certainly than they did against the Rangers, and better than most of the night last night against New Jersey. That game wasn't broken open until the third period. Still frustrated by his team's inability to score. And now the Islanders on their second power play with Halovic off for the trip at 8.35. McDonald clears. Craig McDonald with his sixth NHL team signed as a free agent. And now Comrie sets up. Out to Bergeron. Chatan, Comrie, and Guerin are the forwards. Campoli and Bergeron have the points. Two on two in the corner. And at 14 to the power play. To the line, Bergeron sweeps one to Campoli. But a weak fee picked off by Gratton. And McDonald now just flings it at Di Pietro. Looks for a quick up with a lightning changing. Connects with Chatan. Miro to Garrett. And that's blockered aside by Denny. The smart play by Di Pietro seeing that change to initiate the quick up. Campoli to Chatan. 45 to the power play. Kuba got a stick on that. Doesn't it seem the Lightning have gotten sticks on a lot of Islander passes and shots, and LeCavalier does it there. Well, he had an easy play there because Bergeron was very slow in, first of all, getting to the puck and then retreating with it. He's got to be quicker with his thought process there. Kuba threw it up ahead, but Di Pietro gets it back. And now for Sutton, 22 to the Islander power play. Hunter brings it in, holds up, tried to drop it to Sutton. Richards wouldn't permit. 
Richards with St. Louis. St. Louis just kept going. Yeah, the playoff side. Yeah, there's one of those moves out the blue line. Even though it's a penalty kill, you know, it's, you know, Richards takes his time right there, makes an extra move, and puts St. Louis offside. Right now, the Islanders are having their point men covered very well by the Tampa Bay Lightning here on this power play. I'd like to almost see the, the, the Islanders almost use their point men as decoys here. Because, you know, the, the Lightning are so up high on them, start moving the puck from the half wall down low. Get it on the stick of Comrie. Let him do something with it if he can. Hunter takes it from O'Brien. Sillinger went to the net. Boyle got a piece of first the puck and then Sillinger. And then Ward bodied in by Hunter. And O'Brien sends one off Hunter's stick. It comes to Ward. Trying to get away from Fedotenko. Can't do it. And it's fired right back in by Dang uh, Shane O'Brien. Now Gervais up for Sillinger. Hunter worked it in, and O'Brien will go back to get it. And now the teams begin to change. Sillinger heads off. Shatan out now, along with Park and Bozicek. We seen Simon here in the second period. I don't think so. I haven't seen much of him in the first either. Now Bozicek. And Prospol gets it back. Really, two Islander forwards have barely been used. Simon and Johnson, which played less than two minutes. Now Kuba lines it up, shoots. Really a pass there for LeCavalier. Mark playing without a stick. Cavalier takes him in. Three Islanders around the puck. Well, the Lightning get it back. Ranger with a shot. Deflected by Chatan out of play. Boy, there has been a lot of that on both sides. 8-14 left in the second. Now, Billy, there is one of the giants of this game, the legendary Al Arbor, who not only is in town to coach on Saturday night, his 1500th game, but also it's his birthday. Al is 75 today, and they just sang happy birthday yes, to him. You were very good. You were very, very good. Singing. How's that? Oh, yes. Well, hopefully not loud enough for Al to hear. He was would have ruined the night for him. <laughs> he was at morning skate today. He's uh, checking out the Islander players. I know he's been looking at some tape as well. The Pittsburgh Penguins, I'm told, and getting ready to take on Sid the Kid and Jenny Malkin and all the rest of the Penguins. And he'll probably figure something out that will be a no significant doubt. assistance to the entire Islander staff. Last game he coached was the final game of their playoff series against the Rangers in 1994 and the last game he won which was number 739 and that's the banner that bears that number here at the Coliseum was against the Tampa Bay Lightning in the next to last game of that 93 94 regular season. Vaza check for Park centering feed block rebound goes in. That might have gone in either off of Vaza check or a Tampa Bay skate. Vazicek was certainly closest to it and looked to get something on it. 2 0 New York. Uh, but you really got to go back to the play made by the Islanders D man Chris Campoli to step up and put this play in transition for the Islanders. Vazicek that gets it low to, to uh, Park, and then it's a black at it by Shatan that might be, it could be his or it could be Vazicek's goal. Let's see right here. There's Shatan. It's Vazicek because it goes up the right skate of Paul Ranger who's just trying to stop to get position and into the net. But folks, that play does not happen if it wasn't for the great defensive play by Campoli, neutral zone. All you got to do is show Al Arbor and something good happens <laughs> for the Islanders. And if you think that's a coincidence, look at the record books. Vazicek's goal is going to be his fourth of the season. And all that was was getting to the front. Now, here, all right, this is what I'm talking about. One trade here is Campoli. Step up and get it wide. That's all he's doing. Great play right there. There's the transition. You've got Tampa Bay players that are running around, and in comes Vazicek, right side of your screen. He's going to tap it in and actually have a carom in off the right skate of Paul Ranger. So uh, two to nothing, New York. Seven and a half to go in the second. Olavic surrounded. Waits for help. Sets up Kuba. And now Richards for St. Louis. He throws it to the slot. Nobody home for the Lightning. Omri the other way. Comrie now to Fedotenko. They stay on side. Richards has Comrie. And now so did O'Brien, but Comrie escapes. He played by Comrie. Wick gave it up, though. And Crosspool. Or at least St. Louis across to Richards. Quick shot knocked away by Di Pietro. 
Tough play for St. Louis. That puck was fluttering as he took a swing at it. Mark and Vazicek assist on Chatan's goal. Give it to Miro, his second at 12-19. Comrie knocked aside. That may very well change, but for now it's Miro. Certainly you saw it ultimately go off of Paul Ranger. And now Richard. Here we mentioned Vazicek had touched it before that. And Andy Sutton back to touch up. Now the key out is to watch and see if the Tampa Bay Lightning start cheating. We're going to take one more look at this overhead as we're going to see the puck go in off the skate of Ranger. There's Vazicek hit it. There's Paul Ranger accidentally kicking it as he stops into his own net. That's the best look. It's got to be Vazicek based on that. Zillinger from a deep angle tests to knee. But now again, keep in mind, the Lightning have been struggling so much on the road. Do they start cheating and going to the wrong side of the puck and over committing on the forecheck in the offensive zone, thereby putting even more pressure on their defensemen and giving the, the Islanders two on one, three on two opportunities? Lundin played it ahead. And Lukowicz whips it back around. Last night, Lukowicz played most of the night with Dan Boyle. They were both on the ice for all three jerseys, or first of jerseys, uh, three goals here, Howie. A tough night there. Bratton keeps the puck off the boards. Ranger tees it up, misses the net. Now Boyle down the boards, takes a shot, pinballs back out in front. Sillinger trying to peel it away, had help in doing so. And now Ranger stepped up. And only with a second effort manages to get the puck ahead. Comes right back to him. And Nick Tarneski, number 74, dumps it in. It's the fourth line. Tarneski, Gretton, and Roy. Or Wah. Roy if you're Don Cherry. <laughs> and Bergeron. He refused to call Patrick Wah by his <laughs> properly pronounced name all those years. And Vazicek. Devils it the other way for Park. He's draped briefly by Willette. 437 to go in the second. Willette gets it again. Now to ROY. Thought about a shot. And Willette scoops it in behind the net. A Cavalier, hard feet. Kuba missed the net. Great chance for the Lightning there. Kuba jumped into the play and had a lot of net to shoot at, but missed. And then Comrie breaks up a pass and gets one of his own. But it's offside with 4.07 remaining. Second period, two to nothing, Islanders. It was October 4th, 1990, when the Detroit first round pick from the year before, Mike Sillinger, played his first game in the National Hockey League with the Detroit Red Wings. Had a nice little mullet going there as well. He played with that guy right there, current Islanders assistant coach, Gerard Gallant, who gives us our Geico quote book of the night. He sold this right to uh, Sillinger before they went onto the ice. Don't worry about that other guy in the middle referring to Steve Iserman. He's going to score enough. Just get me the puck. Well, that's not that's not bad advice. You know, Sillinger <laughs> and Iserman have something else in common. They were both first-round picks of the Red Wings. Sillinger, for all the moving he's done over the years, Tend to forget that he was a first round pick all the way back in 1989. Look, this is a guy who was three time 50 plus goal scorer in the juniors for Regina in the Western League. And then he won a Calder Cup in the American League with Adirondack, where Barry Melrose was his coach. He's had a very, very successful career. I mean, yeah, he's been a bit of a vagabond, but the teams want him. Now you know where he got the mullet from, too. <laughs> That's playing true. for Melrose. Now that is Hall of Fame mullet. Richard steps out and rifles it right through the goal mouth. O'Brien oh, tees it up. That was going wide. Di Pietro made sure. Richards, the Lightning pressing here. Hunter batting away at him. 322 remaining in the second period. Gervais missed some of Kuba, who sidestepped the check, but there's going to be a penalty here against the Islanders. And this time the Lightning do nothing to retaliate and even that up as Brad Lukowicz did earlier in the game, and Tampa will have its second tower play. Yeah, I think there's going to be a slash call. It's going to be against Trent Hunter as the Islanders played pretty physical and they played pretty well in front of their own net there. As Tampa Bay was buzzing around that one opportunity just skipped right over the 
stick of uh, St. Louis in front of the net. There's Trent Hunter right in the middle part of your screen, slashing the hands of Jan Halavich. Ted Nolan watches his team go short-handed, but you know, pretty good overall physical shift in their own end in front of Di Pietro there. <laughs> so Hunter the slash, 16-47. Lightning managed two shots on their first power play, and as usual, Sillinger out for an important defensive zone draw. A little conversation with the Cavalier too, huh? You're You're right. Right. Congratulating him. Sillinger telling him he'll get there soon enough. I mean, be strong to hold that silver stick. He's heavy. <laughs> Here's Le Cavalier bursting in. And he missed the net. Sillinger gets rid of it. Kuba, Ward, Boyle, Prospel, Le Cavalier. Power play unit for Tampa Bay. Chatan up front with Sillinger. Witten Martinic, the defense. Prospel around to the blue line. Boyle. Out of the corner for Ward. Jason Ward. Three lightning forwards behind the goal line. Le Cavalier to the blue line to Cuba. Back to Le Cavalier. And Le Cavalier sizing up his options. Cross pull blocked by Martina. Comes back to Cuba. And now Le Cavalier. Hard feed went through the legs of Boyle who keeps it alive for Cuba. Le Cavalier. Cross pull. Haven't taken a shot. But Chatan doesn't clear. Well, the Lightning will try again, but Chatan now on the loose puck. Pats it off the Cavalier and then the rest of the way down. It's a heck of a shift by, by Miroslav Chatan as he was all the way on the right side, got over to help thwart a shot coming in from Luba on the right side of the, of the Tampa strong side there and then helped get the puck out. Now Wallet for St. Louis. Half minute remaining to the power play. Picked off by Park. One man back, it's Boyle. Hilbert joins. Good play by Boyle, but Park keeps the puck. Rips it in front. Hilbert chips at it. Denis made the save. And it slithers to Boyle. And the Islanders with a good shorthand to challenge there. Two great offensive chances by Hilbert while killing penalties tonight. And now Andy Hilbert gets rid of it, and that'll take care of the penalty. Hunter standing in the penalty box will be out in four. And with Richards on the rush, Hunter out of the box. Richards to the high slot, flings one wide. St. Louis as we approach the final minute of the second period. Behind the net, Holovich. Centering feet. Pietro got a stick on him as it was coming out. Richards to St. Louis. That's blocked aside by Fedotenko. On comes Comrie with Hunter. Comrie pulls up. He shoots. Save made. Rebound. Score. Fedotenko. Three to nothing, Islanders. Former Lightning takes care of his ex-teammate. Watch the play of Mike Comrie right here. Gets deep in his own zone, boards the pass there, and goes on a two-on-one with Hunter. And because Richards come back, so he can't pass it over to Hunter. So what Comrie has to do is skate it a little bit more to the right side, open up a little seam, and almost gets it on the stick of Hunter. But then it's Ruslan Fedotenko puts it in, and our Panasonic digital replay shows the look from the left side as he puts it by. A sprawled out Mark Denny and the former Lightning puts it to his old teammates. Andy Hilbert now to the Tampa Bay line. Chips it down the boards. Good play by Mike Comrie. Coming back deep into his own zone to help his team out. To make sure that the puck didn't get low. And Lundin brings it out. 19-12 the time of Fedotenko's fourth of the year. Andre Waugh working win over. The helmet's gone. For win anyway, and there's going to be a penalty here. And it's against Andre Waugh. Pure All frustration, that, huh? That pure whatever. I don't I mean frustration. <laughs> he's trying to get, he's trying to get something going for his team. And he's gonna go against a defenseman that plays a ton of minutes in Brendan Witt. And Witt's too smart. Way too smart to get involved with Andre Waugh. And he can and John Tortorella know he's putting him out there not to get into a fight, but you know, create something with your strength and your size. And all Wah does right now is put it into his face. The gloves into the face of Brendan Witt pushes him, and all Brendan Witt does 
is say, go ahead, take the penalty. That's fine, man. I'm not going to go to the box. That was one of the things that impressed us most about Brendan Witt last year. You know, we had a chance to see him play every game, how easy it was for him to turn that other cheek. Oh, it's because he follows a lot of things that the Dalai Lama says, and I'm being serious. He had a new tattoo put on his foot the other day. Without love, humanity cannot survive. He's saying right there, he's saying, hey, man, be mellow. Don't worry about anything. I'm in control here. He's got everything but the peace sign. You should replace the A with a peace sign. <laughs> But Mike Sillinger, <laughs> productive tonight in career game number 1,000. He's had an assist. And uh, they talk about the scoring on that goal that was initially awarded to Shatan. But John Tortorella has many more things to worry about right now with his team still winless on the road, trailing after two. And Ted Nolan's got to feel a lot better about the way his team's responded to a layoff tonight than on Saturday night. You know how you can tell that the, that competitive spirit is there more? The team has been uh, more physical, but it's not just body checks. It's scratching and clawing and playing tough in front of the net. So the Islanders threw 40 minutes with a 3 to nothing lead over the Lightning. Dead confident foot scoring when we get back. Mike Sillinger would like to remember this night as the night that the Islanders won, they're on their way, leading the Lightning 3 0. As Mike Sillinger has reflected in, uh, on this week as he gets ready to play his 1,000th game, he said, other than Andy Hilbert and Trent Hunter, his favorite line mates were Ray Whitney and Alexander McGillney, the two toughest players he ever played against, Mario Lemieux and Wayne Gretzky. We've got him mic'd up, and as always, Mike Sillinger has had plenty to say. Wow, look at that, hey? Pretty cool. Thanks a lot. Go ahead, go ahead. I got, I got down low, I got down low. Kelly, stay up top. No, we're doing a good job. I'm saying we have to give him the point. If Puck goes out there, that's the thing we can give him. Go, Billy. Uh. Ow. Thanks a lot, Vinny. Good job, buddy. Good help. Oh, you must have had two and one there too, bud. Good try. Go! You got the side here. You got the side. Shoot! Good job, boys. Good try. I had you right away there. Get yeah. him in the shin pads, yeah. You got it. We're gonna get some two and ones, boys. Yeah. We're gonna get some here. I got, I got Big Joe here. Oh yeah! Come on, boys, another big shift here, another big shift. Get some bangs here, boys, lots of bangs. That's the best picture of you right there. <laughs> the no pitcher. The best picture of Mike Sillinger was a picture. A typical Mike Sillinger stat line so far. He's played over 14 minutes in all situations. A plus one. You saw him on the bench celebrating one of the goals. He was on the ice for the first goal of the night with Bill Guerin playing penalty kill shorthanded and is above 55% in the faceoff circle, which he has been in every one of the years that he has played, that they've kept that stat since 1998. Islanders shutting out the perhaps fragile lightning. Back with more after this. I'm Ted Nolan. Being an NHL head coach is an honor and a privilege. On Saturday night, I'll have a great view of an unbelievable event, and you can too. On Saturday, legendary New York Islanders coach Al Arbor returns to the bench to coach his 1500th game for the team. For tickets, call Ticketmaster at 631-888-9000 or visit NewYorkIslanders.com. They'll talk about Saturday for years to come. Don't miss your chance to see it live. I'm assistant coach Ted Nolan, and I'm an Islander. On November 3rd, history will be made on the island. Don't miss Hall of Fame coach Al Arbor's return to the bench for his 1500th game. All the guys are going to be pumped up. As the Islanders take on superstar Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Don't miss Al Arbor night, game 1500. I'll always be grateful to Al. He was like my second father for 12 years. Islanders versus Penguins, this Saturday on FSN. 
Back at the intermission, and assistant head, uh, coach Gerard Gallant is with us. You were on the ice when Mike Sillinger took his first shift in the NHL, and you have the now famous quote where, talking about Steve Eiserman, you said to Mike, Don't worry about him, he's going to get his goals. Pass the puck to me. What do you remember about him 17 years ago? Well, I just remember a nervous kid who was playing his first game, and I just tried to break the ice a little bit with him. And, you know, he played very well, and uh, congratulations to Silly for playing a thousand. So now that you're in the position you're in and you see him here with the Islanders, why is he so important to this team? Well, it's just all the things he does. He plays a complete game for us. He plays power play, penalty killing, and, you know, he's been a faceoff man his whole career. So he's just a special guy, and uh, he's a team leader. Are you surprised that he lasted 17 years knowing, you know, him way back then? Well, anybody that plays a thousand games, you're definitely surprised because it's a long time. But uh, Silly's the type of guy that works hard and competes hard, and he takes care of himself all summer long. So that's why he's playing 17 years. All right, thanks for this. Islanders leading 3 0. Let's go upstairs. And, Deb, it's been a lot more than just Mike Sillinger tonight, even though he is certainly the central figure playing his thousandth game, but he's had a lot of help in building this lead. Well, his teammates have been very good. I thought the second period much better than the first period, even though they got out of the first up 1 0. Second period, they started playing a little more physical, a little even tighter in front of their net. And I really like the neutral zone play. They started pushing the play up and actually culminated in a beautiful play, Howie. By Chris Campoli stepping up there eventually led to one of the goals. It was one to nothing after one, and then they properly changed that to Vazicek, and then Fedotenko with a rebound goal off a great rush by Comrie. And really, it was a period where the Islanders had plenty of chances from beginning to end. And they started pretty early on in this period as they just kept playing the walls well, being physical. And Andy Hilbert was excellent killing penalties. This one I still think ramps just over or just past the stick of Dan Boyle. Maybe deflected it just a little bit. Regardless, they kept pushing the play. Here's another good outlet by DiPietro. He had about three of those in that period alone. Billy Guerin with the long shot as well. But it was the effort, the energy, and just the overall pushing the play. They, they kept pushing and pushing the play, getting it to the front of the net, which is very smart against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now here are the goals. This is the play I'm talking about. Campoli, beautiful play, reading it, stepping up on the wall, getting it up quickly. Vazicek down low to Park, back to Shatan, and Vazicek ends up getting it and just trickles in past Mark Denis. But the aisle's not done. Just at the end of killing a penalty, Mike Comrie with the great hesitation move to get Ranger to come over, thereby opening the other side when Hunter went to the seam there. But it's Fedezenko who's actually going to get the goal as he pounced on the loose puck. Well, Rick DiPietro has been a little more mobile tonight than that, and Ricky's been perfect for two. New York Islanders hockey is brought to you in part by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mdusa.com. By GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit them at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And by Panasonic, it's time to bring back family time. Panasonic, ideas for life. And the idea to bring Al Arbor back to the Nassau Coliseum was hatched by Ted Nolan. That will take place on Saturday when Al coaches his 1500th game for the Islanders. And make a special note of the fact that we will join you a half hour earlier than usual. We will be on the air at 6 p.m. With MSG Hockey Night Live's special pregame coverage of Al Arbor Night. That will include the banner raising ceremony. We'll show you the one from 1997 when that banner, 739, went up. And we'll also revisit perhaps the most famous game of the dynasty, save for, of course, Bob Nystrom's game winner in overtime to win the first cup. The one against Pittsburgh in 1982 when they trailed by two goals with 5.55 to go in the third period and won the game to win that first round series. We will hear from some of his former players, including, of course, Butch Goring, who is a regular contributor to our telecasts and has some great stories and reminiscences of that night in particular, as well as, of course, the entire run. So Saturday is going to be extremely special. Make sure you're with us, beginning with our special pregame coverage at 6. Now, the Islanders on the power play here for another minute 11. Bergeron wheeling at the line. Across to Camp Holy, and a nifty glove save. Snatched out of the air by Denis. And it was deflected off of the stick of Paul Ranger, and that's why Denis had to make such a nice save there. But the Islanders getting good puck movement from Bergeron, who faked the shot. 
over. And Foley. Billy Al Arbor is in town. He was here this morning at the morning skate. And look at this. Ted Nolan calls the entire group of Islander players together and pointed up to where Al was seated with Charles Wong and Steve Webb. And, you know, he's a revered figure here. And that translates all the way down to the current players as well as those who played for him. Awful lot of respect shown by Ted Nolan and the rest of the Islanders coaching staff, and, and rightfully so. And didn't get a chance yet to talk to Al Arbor, but, you know, he just seems so happy to be back here. He was beaming the whole way, and he still has that presence about him when he's walking through this building. Something when you consider it first, he wasn't even crazy about the idea of coming here because he thought it was the big city. Bergeron's drive missed the net, and Karam's out of the zone. You may know that story from the summer of 73 when Bill Torrey wanted to bring him here. Al thought, I don't know, New York, I'm not really into the, the big city, but then he came out, they showed him around Long Island and fell in love with it. Shatana drive, and that missed the net. He was pressured by Cuba. Up to the point, Bergeron. Now Hunter, 16 to the power play. Chatan knocked down. And the puck back to the point. Bergeron lost the line to Campoli. Final five to the power play. He found Hunter's stick, but the shot by Hunter found Denise Pans, and there's no further play. Chatan with a good play along the wall, though, even though when he got uh, dumped, he's able to hold it along the wall and move it back to the point. Islanders get an opportunity as the point men, who I think have been pretty good in this game, in particular Campoli and Bruno Gervais have been very, very good in this game. The point play's been smart. They move it down low. And the Islanders getting good rotation, getting good opportunities. It's a good start to this period as well, because you knew Tampa was going to come out and try and be aggressive, trying to kill this penalty. Brendan Witt lofts one to the net. It pinballs around before it's swept away. The team's back at full strength now. Two minutes gone here in the third period. Islanders up three. Here's Richards in transition. Fires. Missed the net upstairs. Boy, the Lightning have either overpassed or missed shot. And that's before you factor in the excellent play of Di Pietro, who has stopped all 17. In their heads. That, now, yeah, they really have the look of a team that's pressing. Don't they? In, it, is, it is in their heads. And anytime you get a team that relies on offense as their number one go to thing. And, and I know John Tortorell talks about being a solid uh, foundation of a, of a good defense. But, you know, Le Cavalier, Richard St. Louis, they all want to get their cookies. They all want to score goals. When that's their go to, you know, it's tough on them. It gets in their heads. You know what else is compounding the Lightning situation is that the team is being sold. It has not yet been approved, but Commissioner Gary Bettman said after a meeting just yesterday that, you know, significant progress has been made and the sale yeah. is on schedule. Yeah. And I don't know how much that affects the players, Billy, but, you know, is John Tortorella coaching for his Tampa Bay job? Stave made there by Di Pietro. Well, that's a different issue, though. I mean, that, that, that's a different issue there. He, I don't know if he's thinking about that or not. But a tank goal. By the center has Cuba all over him. But I'll tell you what, the ownership uh, ship situation in Tampa is is nothing like you know issues in some other places around the league where it's affected the teams a bit more. As icing's called against Tampa. Nashville comes to Nashville mind. Nashville comes to mind, and, and look, even in Atlanta, they've had a tumultuous ownership situation there for a while between a group of owners and then one owner, Steve Belkin, who went away, and has been, that's been in court forever. Now this, right now, but this guy can coach. And he's oh, got yeah. the Stanley Cup ring to prove it. You know, he made a tremendous impact on this team from the moment he took over. He brought in a very aggressive mentality with him and a very aggressive forecheck, two-man forecheck. And, and he said this morning, we have no consideration, absolutely no consideration of changing our style of play, even though we're struggling right now. No way. Safe is death. That is his favorite thing. Right. Well, the Lightning have had a whole lot of success against the Islanders until this point tonight. They have won eight straight regular season games against the Islanders and 11 straight overall when you go back to the playoff series the year they won the Cup in 04. Well, the Islanders up three. We're just about four minutes into the third period. Chris Simon in deep now. Lost it to Lukowicz. And the puck eludes Sillinger, who wasn't interested in playing it because he was heading off on a change. The fact that he turned around and touched it, the Islanders would have been caught with too many men. Willette tried to feed Grattan. Witt got a piece of that. Park sent sprawling. Martinek without a stick. 
That shot blocked by Witt. Well, that has it back. And then Lundin shot hit Witt. Centering feed. Well, that Di Pietro gets a stick on that. It rolls loose. Di Pietro a save on Willette once more. And with Bozacek down in front, comes to Park and he clears. A very cool and composed Di Pietro with that play there. He just followed it into the crease area and made saves, even though he had a bunch of sweaters around him from both his own team and the Lightning. Now it's Lundin. Up for Ward. Di Pietro thinking about a quick up, but he couldn't do it. Well, let and Ward at least were in position to take away the center of the ice. And now Boyle works it across. 23 to 17 unofficially. The Islanders leading in shots. Brad Richards trying to get around Comrie. Right through the goal mouth. St. Louis crunched by Trent Hunter. Moved behind the net by Fedotenko. Ranger pinches. Bergeron has it again. Now for Sutton. Comrie finds Fedotenko and gets locked up with Olavich. But there's going to be a penalty here against the Lightning. The save by Denis on Hunter. And the Islanders keep the puck. So Di Pietro gets to the bench. Extra skater on. Drive by Sutton behind Denis. Hunter pokes it home. Trent Hunter. That it was a delayed penalty. He skates the puck into the zone and he holds on to it. There's the penalty that's going to be called against Tampa. Now, eventually, Comrie's going to get it after the play gets cycled back. Right here, look how he shields his body from St. Louis. Shields it, shields it, and then gets it back to Andy Sutton. That allows for Hunter to come off the wall to the front of the net. Boyle can't get it after Denis can't corral it, and Trent Hunter has a wide open net. A 4 nothing lead. Beautiful play again by Mike Comrie. He's had two excellent assists in this game. Hunter scored a goal in Buffalo on opening night. He had not scored one since. He'd only had two assists since the opener, including one last Saturday in the Islanders' last game. And now it is 4 to nothing Islanders, so never mind what would have been a penalty. The Islanders really do score with a man advantage because Di Pietro had gotten to the bench. Front runner second of the year is opened up a four to nothing Islander lead. And there's Hilbert in quickly. I think that play also typifies the good shot of Andy Sutton. Uh, Andy Sutton known for being a defensive type defenseman, also has a, he a heavy shot of cannon, and he got rid of it quickly though. Zillinger knocked it down with a high stick, so because Park, his teammate, touched it next, that means they blow the play down. 13.08 to go in the third. We're going to give you a Panasonic digital replay. The guy circling now is Mike Comrie, all right? Now, we're going to roll it here. Watch as he shields the puck. Now, in comes Andy Sutton at the same time, and then he's going to pivot back to open himself up into the shooting lane right there. Comrie gets away from his man. Sutton knows that nobody's there. And in comes Trent Hunter because everybody on Tampa shifted their focus to the right point, man, Andy Sutton. They didn't pick up the man down low, Trent Hunter. A beautiful play by all Islanders involved. So it is four to nothing New York Sutton and Comrie assist on Hunter's second Comrie now with 13 points in his first 10 games as an Islander two assists in this one and we're seven minutes into the third period. Lundin for a while. And Di Pietro stopped that. Martinez back up. With help from Park, who took a little tug at Tarneski. And Chetan whips it across to Park. Richard Park has it blocked away by the goaltender, Mark Denny. Quick with a shot. That deflects. Headed down by the glove of Tarneski. The Islanders recover, but they're offside. Yeah, but you notice, though, how Tampa now is just trying to push the puck through the neutral zone there, Howie. And the Islanders were able to stand the blue line and again, push it towards their offensive blue line. Because right now, Tampa's starting to cheat. Their forwards are taking off a half a stride earlier, trying to get into the offensive zone, trying to make something happen down four to nothing. If the Islanders are smart and just keep 
the Tampa Bay Lightning forwards in front of them, meaning the defense will keep it in front of them. There'll be a lot of turnovers because eventually Tampa's going to start cheating and reaching instead of playing the man and getting the puck deep. And he Sutton plays it off the glass. And Kuba comes back to get it. Now Philip Kuba. Lofts it into the Islander zone. Hutter chips it, but not out. Now he gets a second chance. Was kept in temporarily by the skate of O'Brien. 11.44 to go in the third. Fedotenko trying to weave his way through some traffic. Shoved by Kuba. And it's recovered by O'Brien. Pavic up ahead. Broken up by Ward. And now Simon. Bumps behind the net. With Ranger. Let's play to keep it in by Bruno Gervais. Those two Gervais and Campoli have had an excellent game. And here's St. Louis. Marty St. Louis. Cross now to Holovich. Ranger turns and shoots wide. Campoli recovers. Spins it around the boards and out. And this one hitting all the way down. However, they wave the icing off. And so Boyle up for Richards makes his way into the Islanders zone. Brad Richards pestered by Witt. Richards went down. Here comes Shatan. One man back. Three Islanders attack. Shatan makes his move. Sets up Witt. He's down. He nudges it to the net. Gets a second chance. But he stopped that. And Richards fails to clear. Martinez holds it in and jams it in behind the net. Islanders had a three on one and who turned out to be the trigger man Brendan Witt. Well, how about his second opportunity it was from his knees. Martinez drive hits a stick. Centering attempt by Park didn't get through. Shatan's got it again. Looked like Dorf on hockey there. <laughs> Midway through the third. And at the blue line Witt has trouble holding on. So he plays it in and the Islanders tag up and play continues. Of course, Witt does have 21 goals. And it's taken him 734 games to get. Them. Now Hunter puts it off of Prospel. That's Lav Vinny Prospel for Lundin, and that goes off Fedotenko, stick it out of play. Looked like there was going to be a penalty against the Islanders when we come back. 9.34 remaining here. Third period, Islanders up 4-0 over the Lightning. Trent Hunter battling it out in the corner with Vinny Prospel. Gets his stick into the body, I guess. And he gets called for the hook. That was marginal. Well, we want to remind you about the Hummer Metro Ice Ice Challenge. These are the standings. They're determined by the points acquired in the games among the three local teams in head-to-head -head competition. And the next game involving two local teams is coming Saturday, November 10th. The Islanders will be here, I should say, next Saturday, November 10th, against the Devils. And you can tune into Hockey Night Live for that one at 6.30 p.m. So with Hunter in the box, Tampa power play goes to work. The Islanders with a four-goal lead midway through the third. It's Le Cavalier, St. Louis, Wah, and on the points, Richards, who shoots here. Di Pietro the save, knocks it away, and the rebound shot off the post by Boyle. And then over the stick of Vinny Le Cavalier. Luck on the Islanders' side right now. Di Pietro's been good. He's also been fortunate. Richards risks one. And hits a stick and bounds away from Di Pietro. He's complaining about some interference in front. Looked back towards the referee and pleaded his case. Back at the line, Boyle. Richards lets it go. Le Cavalier steps up. Now St. Louis to the slot. Boyle and a save by Di Pietro. And Boyle, even recovering from that wrist problem, can really shoot the puck. Di Pietro made a solid save, and then it's cleared by Sillinger. Boyle gets his goaltender into the act here. And Denis isn't all that crazy about the ideas. You well, can a, no, it's a penalty. It's not only is he not crazy about it, it's a penalty. Oh, he was that. <laughs> That's why he wasn't crazy about it. He's playing hacky sack with himself. <laughs> nobody, to, nobody to hack with over and there. Delay of game. And it's, you know, 
This is not his strength is handling the puck. Holmquist is, is, is really not good at it, but oh, yeah. Denise just, I mean, right there, blatant, and then that's the no, that's the no touch zone. No kick, no nothing. That's a no-no zone, and you know, I understand what Boyle's trying to do there is his team's regrouping, getting some fresh guys on the ice, but maybe not the smartest play. Well, that'll even things up for the next 55 seconds, and then the Islanders will be up a man for a minute five as they continue to put a stranglehold on this one against a team they've had so much trouble with the last couple of years. Four on four, Gervais and Campoli on defense. It was Campoli's shot that went wide. Bozicek is playing up front with Shatan. Islanders practiced four on four an awful lot this week to get in that kind of competitive spirit. Ted Nolan skated him pretty hard, but he did a lot of game situations. Could pay off here. You know, Billy, the Lightning lost a player who never got a whole lot of headlines this past summer. Prosperous shot stopped by Di Pietro. A defenseman who's just a stay-at-home guy who always seemed to make the good, safe, sound play. He went to the Calgary Flames, Corey Sarich. And he's never going to be a franchise player. He's never going to be a guy who grabs a lot of headlines. But, boy, do they miss his steady presence, presence yep. on defense. No question. And especially his, his veteran play as well. They're playing, you know, Lundin's a young kid. Lundin with a juggle. Ranger is a very good defenseman, but he's still young. O'Brien is still young. He's only been in the league for a little over two years. So you lost a lot. You lost a lot of smart presence and, and veteran presence with a uh, uh, veteran leadership. I mean, without having Sarge there. And it's life in the salary cap age, particularly with a team that has some high-profile stars and Richards, Le Cavalier, and St. Louis, and also as we mentioned before, a team in the midst of being sold, and that'll affect the team's bottom line too. So an Islander power play here for another 35 seconds. Seven minutes to go in the third. Comrie trying to get away from Carlson. Steps up and shoots it off of Lukowicz. Brad Lukowicz has had a rough time of it, as we mentioned before. Tonight is no different. Ward dumps it into the Islander zone. Islanders have Guerin and Simon up front along with Comrie. And Guerin will bounce one in. Penalty about to expire. Well, that has been serving it is up and on his way out of the box. Full strength. Well, that takes the pass and over the line to McDonald. And that went wide. I don't think Di Pietro touched it. McDonald gets it back. With a backhander off Di Pietro. Simon tried to get it out of trouble, but the Lightning persisted. And well, that holds it in with 6.05 to go in the third. And Di Pietro to the edge of his office. And now Simon for Garrett, who pushes it in. Shots are right now listed at 30 to 24 Islanders. And even though they led one to nothing at the end of one, it wasn't their best period, but they have been awfully good since then. Brendan Witt has Wah on him. Karnowski grabs the puck. Pietro calmly held his ground. And that's a key word right there, calmly. And, and that's, uh, you know, really, Rick D. Pietro, besides making great saves in the first period, he did it calmly. And I think the team recognized that. Ranger hits the post. That's a couple of posts just in this third period. Oh, Ranger let go of Sizzler. Did that deflect off of Brendan Witt? It, uh, just enough because the way that Di Pietro reacted both to the shot and afterwards when he looked at Brendan Witt, I'm thinking it might have hit him just a little bit, maybe one of his skates. Well, I would need glasses on top of glasses to see that one firsthand, but you might be right. You know what the end result was because you could hear that. And Di Pietro lets that one clank off the glass behind the net. A plus pull with Vazicek on him. 4.44 remaining in the third. Bruno Gervais takes it to the corner and then sends it up the right side. Couldn't be held by Shatan. Pazacek, Shatan, Aaron Johnson, the combination out there now. Johnson trying to relax the puck. Got it to Miro. Tried to play it towards the goal, but it hit the leg of O'Brien. And Le Cavalier sends Ward in. Now to Prosper, and then Le Cavalier reaching, fell down. That's the way it's gone for the Lightning, who at times tonight have thrown the extra pass or simply passed up a shot and when they have shot Di Pietro 
has made some solid stops. And the post has helped him out a few times as well. So you know that's only adding to the Lightning misery. What do they have to do to score, they're saying? The Islanders would like to make them wait past the next 354 to find out. Here comes Hilbert. He's in. He shoots. And that one hops over the net. Well, Andy Hilbert's had all sorts of chances. Sillinger to Hilbert, and that one's blocked. Sutton shot denied by Denis, and as frustrated as the Lightning are, put Andy Hilbert down for some Islander frustration of his own. And that frustration has lasted all season, at least to this point. It's only their 10th game of the year, but he's had some chances. St. Louis takes a seat. Malavich for Richard. Richards gets it back from St. Louis. Lundin fires. And that's blocked before reaching Di Pietro. And Sillinger clears. Mike Sillinger got on the score sheet early in his 1,000th game. Brad Richards. Now for Lundin. Checked from behind by Fedotenko. And the Islanders will get it out here. Hunter with Comrie. Hunter closes in. Looks for Comrie. That's batted away by Ranger. There'll be a penalty here to the Lightning. Witt grabs the puck. I think there's going to be a couple of different penalties here. 2.46 to go in the third. Welcome back to the Coliseum. Rick DiPietro has been outstanding. He's also had some help from his post here lately in the third period. That one was a rocket from the left point that went by. Now here's the Rangers shot. It does deflect off Brendan Witt, and it goes by DiPietro. Look at him look over at Brendan Witt saying, hey, man. Help me out there. I'm just kidding. Right there, there's our most efficient Islander, Rick DiPietro. Brought to you by the New York Long Island Honda dealers. NYLIHonda.com. Rick DiPietro, 27 saves tonight has been spectacular. All he was doing there with that look, I mean, all kidding aside with Witt is just saying, hey, you know, give me one side or the other. That's all goalies ask for. One side or the other. If you're going to take the outside, that's all right. I'll go inside or vice versa. And it's turned out, Billy, there were two separate penalties called. One to McDonald of Tampa, the other to Comrie of the Islanders. A high stick on McDonald, a slash on Comrie. And so four on four with two and a half remaining here in the third period. Rangers have shut out Washington two to nothing behind Henrik Lundqvist. Di Pietro, a couple of minutes away, perhaps, from his 12th career shutout. Those two have never thrown goose eggs on the same night. Martinez shot it off of Paul Ranger. Vazicek steps in front of him. It's a Vazicek. Martinez, and that floats wide. 45 seconds beyond the time remaining in the four-on-four four are left in the game. So we're under two minutes to go in the third and a minute four left on the four on four as you look at Sillinger I said to Mike earlier today about that thousandth game I said you know the most impressive part of that is to me that's a thousand morning skates <laughs> and he says I guarantee you pal it was not a thousand morning skates and you absolutely saluted him for I that. like the way <laughs> he thinks he talked about false hustle your kind of guy absolutely <laughs> I like Will Chamberlain's line coach you got me once a day you want me in the morning or at night when they started the shoot around in the NBA. You know, this could end up being Sillinger's most successful stop in his 17 year career, assuming he doesn't go anywhere this year or next year. He'll play more games. That's asking a lot I based, know, on, his based on his history. history. Exactly. Hilbert Park. <laughs> I know you could see why he's always been the kind of guy that other teams would want when you approach trade them, mm -hmm. right? Now, he, he does all the little things. Face off, so important, especially come playoffs he kills penalties he'll score some timely goals but I think the most important thing is he fits into any locker room that he goes to everybody likes Mike Sillinger and he adds leadership to a team certainly has here we're into the final minute eight seconds left to the four on four one sixty five percent of his draws tonight it's about right for him well it's probably a little high for the course of a, a season or a career but you expect that from him is that good on the draws and the crowd really appreciates the performance by the Islanders tonight. Remember how amped up Di Pietro was in the early stages of what became a blowout loss to Carolina on Saturday night after the long layoff. Well he was really under control tonight. You saw that early. 
And was called on often in that first period when he made 10 saves, many of them real good. And being the heartbeat of this team, as Di Pietro goes, so goes the Islanders. That is so important that he came out calm, focused, and ready to play a very solid hockey game. Now it looks like he's going to get his 12th career. Shut out the Islanders. Convincingly beat the Lightning 4 to nothing. Sillinger's milestone night, 1,000th game, a success in all categories except, of course, if you're John Tortorella. Still searching for answers to get his team a win. Lightning now are 0-6 to start the year on the road. That is a franchise worst for the Lightning organization. And Rick DiPietro gets his 12th career regular season shutout. He made some beautiful saves, a little help from the post. A lot of help from his team as well in front of his net tonight, Howie. I thought in the second period, the Islanders as a team defensively tightened up well and protected that front of the net well. And one last leap with Campoli, and then the salute. Important win tonight for the Islanders, especially the way that they came back and played against Carolina. They have four days off, you know, not to play since last Saturday, to come out. They had some good practices. They shook it off. As Rick DiPietro said, hopefully we do not need to deal with those kind of post games anymore this season, referring to that Carolina debacle. Well, a very good recovery, and not only a great job by the Islanders as a group, but in particular, Mike Sillinger. And passion worked its way down to the entire roster tonight. It's a good, solid game. And hey, he's nice to see that the fans recognize the milestone, too. I'll tell you what as well. He's the type of guy. He's such a good guy. I guarantee his teammates were saying, let's win it for him. Let's go out there and give him the kind of effort that he gives us every night. Uh, usually, a goaltender pitches a shutout. He's got a chance to be the number one star. I wonder if this one might be set up for Sillinger. I hope the fix is in. But Atenko is number three, and he had a goal against his former team. The second star, New York Islanders, number 18. Oh, so much for the fix theater, huh? A lot of shutouts, a shutout. Sillinger probably told him. And I know Mike Sillinger, he might have said, you know what, if you're thinking of making me the first star, give it to Ricky. He pitched the shutout. Really <laughs> you got to fill the time. <laughs> I think we're giving it too much thought. That's but congratulations. Yes. Ricky absolutely earns the shutout. And uh, Deb Kaufman will not only chat with Rick DiPietro, but also Mike Sillinger. How's the emotion now that the 1,000th game is behind you and it's a win? Oh, it's great. You know, obviously, uh, that's uh, one way to top off uh, this uh, weight here for this 1,000th game is a big victory. You know, a goaltender here, a big shutout, and uh, played a great game for us, so. One of your line mates almost the whole time you've been here, Andy Hilbert, took a stick to the face, but then you set up Bill Guerin on that same play for the first goal. Yeah, Andy uh, has been working hard as of late, and, uh, you know, he's, he's going to score soon. But, uh, yeah, Billy had a great shot there. Uh, Guy jumped me at the line, and uh, Billy went in and uh, put it five hole. Big goal. You stay healthy, you could end up playing more, game for the, more games for the Islanders than any other of the organizations that you've played for. Funny sometimes how things work out. Yeah, it sure is. You know, obviously, uh, I really enjoy my time here in Long Island. It's a great place, and it's great to see uh, the building uh, filling up. You played for 21 head coaches, including Scotty Bowman. How about adding Al Arbor to that list when you play for him on Saturday? Yeah, it'll be obviously a great thrill. I met him this morning, and uh, him and his wife, and... Obviously, uh, that's another great milestone on Saturday night. Right, congratulations for this. We're going to talk to your goaltender. You. Twelve career shutouts now, Rick. How about the preparation this week? Ted Nolan had you guys scrimmaging quite a bit, and it seemed like it really got you ready for the game. Yeah, well, it was tough. We had a lot of days off, and uh, last time we came out in this building, we put a, put a stinker up for the fans. So we wanted to come back and rectify that situation, come out hard and, and play strong, and um, you know, I thought we did that. Martin St. Louis, Vincent LeCavalier, they have so much talent on the Tampa Bay side. What were you guys able to do tonight to stop them? I think our D played great, blocked a lot of shots. Our forwards did a, did a good job of being smart. The blue lines, they back checked hard, and uh, you know, it makes for a good game. And suddenly now you get to play another game in 48 hours. You don't have to wait another week. How about for you playing with Al Arbor on the bench Saturday? Well, it's going to be exciting. I mean, uh, you know, he's a, he's a legend. And so uh, we're going to do whatever we can to get up and, and play a great game. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll have all the, uh, all the support there again on Saturday night. Do you think he'll have a, have a couple of ideas how to stop Sidney Crosby? 
Um, you know, I hope so. I think everyone's still trying to figure out how to stop him, but uh, we play like we did tonight. Good, smart game. Uh, we'll be all set. All right, thanks, Rick. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. He can barely get off the ice. <laughs> Well, when you consider that Al Arbor figured out a way to neutralize Mario Lemieux and Yarmer Yager in his last great coaching performance for the Islanders, he may very well have something special planned for Crosby. But Deep Pietro leads the Islanders to a shutout win on Sillinger's thousandth game. This is Hockey Night Live on FSN New York. The Islanders shutting out the Tampa Bay Lightning. And we've got the head coach, Ted Nolan. We talked about the emotion of Mike Sillinger's 1,000th game and Rick DiPietro with the shutout, but pure X's and O's. How did you shut out this team? Well, the one, one thing we knew at, uh, with Tampa, they like to play uh, their top guys a lot, and, and we felt if, if we get the puck in deep uh, and uh, go to our strength, which is uh, forechecking and try to wear them out, uh, eventually it'll come to our, our favor towards the end, which uh, uh, it worked out pretty good, but uh, Ricky kept this in early. Right. Their offensive players can be so explosive and they rely on their offense so much that they have tried maybe a different tact and playing some better defense and they did block a lot of shots. They did play real well in their own zone, especially at the beginning of the night, but you were able to sort of overcome that. Well, you know, that's, that's one good thing about, uh, you know, your, your best players being your best players. And tonight, uh, our best player was uh, was that. And Ricky uh, kept us in early and, and gave us that, that opportunity to, to get the puck in and to continue to fight through. And uh, uh, certainly, they, they blocked a lot of shots, but we were pretty persistent. And that's one thing we, we talked about during this week of practice, uh, about uh, coming from the start of the game to the finish of the game and, and trying to play a persistent, uh, hard-fought type of game. And uh, we got better as the game went. Do you think one of these times the puck will go in for Andy Hilbert? You know, poor, poor Andy. I think it was 20 games last year before he got his first game. And you know, but uh, you know, sometimes we, uh, unfortunately, we, we measure people's success in this league by by goal scoring, and we don't measure it by uh, the way they work and what they bring to the team. And and Andy's a, a great, uh, great team uh, team guy, and he, he penalty kills, and he's out in the last minute of the plays, and he does a lot of things uh, besides scoring goals. But it'd be nice for him to score a goal. One last thing, because it is Al Arbor night on Saturday, and it was your idea to have him come back to coach the 1500th game. He's been around at practice. Practice today. What's this experience been like for you? Oh, it, it's been great. I mean, even uh, have an uh, honor and uh, privilege to, to speak to him on the phone last uh, last little while before he even got here. And when he walked in, into the room here this morning, uh, I mentioned to the, to the assistant coaches that you know Al looks really good. And said if he does a real good job, he can steal our job again. So, but it, it's going to be a, a great uh, great tribute to, to Al to, to a great man that did uh, some great things here in Long Island. All right, thanks, Ted. Thank you. All right, at this rate, Ted Ohm will take a long time with the NHL schedule makers to get to 1500 games. This is only the 10th game that the Islanders have played this season. They played fewer games in October than anybody else in the league, but they're now 6 and 4. They're up to 12 points, and they will play again on Saturday night. The Islanders get four. They shut out the Lightning after the Lightning won both times here last year. Stay tuned right now. More highlights of Lightning and their road odyssey continuing on Long Island. Highlights thanks to FSN New York. In front, all alone. Not in this building. Out in front, the Cavalier denied by Di Pietro. And, then, and now Cuba wrists one that's blocked away by Di Pietro. Lines up Ricky, a big hit Hilbert, yep, his own he guy. Yes, he did. He was trying to swap the puck. Garen fires, he scores! And at the very least, that'll make Hilbert feel a little bit better. Across the line to LeCavalier, in front, pushed over the net by Ward. Di Pietro still down, tries to gather the puck in and succeeds. Andy Helbert trying to get it away from Richards, does, circles the net, the knee down, he looked for Fedotenko. Cross pull down the boards, the coverage in the slot, recovered by Kuba, save Di Pietro, and Rick Di Pietro has been sharp was against the Tampa Bay Lightning in the next to last game of that 93-94 regular season. Vaz a check for Park Center, eight feet block, rebound goes in. Two nothing New York. On comes Comrie with Hunter. Comrie pulls up, he shoots, save made, rebound, score! Feto Pinko! Three to nothing Islanders. Lundin shot, hit with. Centering feed, well, that Di Pietro gets a stick on that and rolls loose. 
Pete Pietro a save on Willett once more. And the Islanders keep the puck, so Di Pietro gets to the bench. Extra skater on, drive by Sutton behind the knee. Hunter pokes it home. Trent Hunter, and it's 4 to nothing Islanders. Pass the next 354 to find out. Here comes Hilbert. He's in, he shoots, and that one hops over the net. The Islanders convincingly beat the Lightning 4 to nothing. Ricky Pietro stops 28, 12th career shutout, also got an assist. That's the eighth of his career. Mike Sillinger playing game 1,000, and he assists on the first goal for the Islanders, their first win over Tampa in nine tries. A lot of people have been beating Tampa this year, at least six on the road this year, as Tampa now 0-6-0 on the road. They just cannot get it done at all. The numbers look absolutely horrible. I'm looking for something that's redeeming, uh, but for Tampa on the road, they just can't get it done right now. Why? You're